So in this video, if you're looking to move to Utah again, and I talk about Draper all the time, I needed, I needed to do this. I needed to go into detail on the neighborhoods in Draper and kind of what you can expect with them, what they're going to be like, feel like, look like, cost like. Let's go into depth on these neighborhoods in Draper, Utah, and why you might like some of them and why they might not be the best fit for you. <laughs> idea of these neighborhoods in Draper but first before I do if you're looking to move to Utah give me a like on this video smash that subscribe button and you know I am a licensed realtor here in the state of Utah and I love helping people come out this way it's a lot more fun than just making the videos I'll be honest these are fun and I, I like being creative but I love sharing Utah with anybody coming out this way wonderful wonderful place so if you are moving out this way, definitely hit that uh, hit those buttons, but give me a call. Shoot me a text, send me an email, you know, I'd love to help you and you move to Utah. Or, you know, schedule a Zoom call. Let's talk face to face and let's move on. Let's just talk about the neighborhoods. So I'm gonna start up the mountain and work my way down Suncrest. So Suncrest is a neighborhood basically on the top of Draper. You're up on top of the mountain. You are split in half up there with county lines. You're kind of split between Utah County and Salt Lake County, and that can bring headaches in and of itself. Different tax rates, you know, all sorts of just frustrating points. Being county split, it's kind of annoying when your neighbor is Salt Lake County and you're Utah County, vice versa, and you really have no idea what you're dealing with. So that's gonna be a challenge with Suncrest. Suncrest is, like I said, up on the mountain, and it definitely gives you more of that kind of exclusive feel, but it's not as expensive as you'd think. I would have thought, you know, these are all multi-million dollar homes, but they range really between $500 and $1,000, and a couple million dollars for the most part. So you've got a bigger range than I would have expected up in Suncrest, but you're gonna have a bit of a drive up there and if you're okay with driving that way, then fine. But that Traverse Ridge Road, it can get kind of ugly sometimes. So I'll give you a heads up. Suncrest may not be the best for you if you don't like driving mountain roads in the snow. Okay, South Mountain. South Mountain, you could break up into all sorts of things. Deer Run is up in South Mountain. There's a lot of different smaller like communities within South Mountain, but South Mountain as a whole, right at the bottom of Suncrest, kind of just right there. It's got a golf course there, nice, big, beautiful golf course. The, uh, the city rec center is there. There's an elementary school there. Very nice area. The amphitheater is there. I will say though that the roads in, in the Deer Run South Mountain area are really narrow and it, I hate narrow roads, so if if you don't mind having to wait for cars to kind of finagle their way through each other, then, then you know, that might be okay, but South Mountain might be a headache otherwise. Cost-wise, you've got a lot of variation in South Mountain, but generally you're cheaper than Suncrest. Most places are going to be. So South Mountain is going to be a little on the lower end. Um, by lower end, I mean between like 500 and uh, $900,000. I mean, million dollar homes are pretty normal in, Bount in Draper as a whole, but it really depends on where you're at, how far past that million dollar mark you're going to get. So if you need to commute to Salt Lake, that would be a good choice for you. But at the same time, you get a lot of noise from that. So you got to kind of hash that out, which one's going to be better for you. For the record, in the Suncrest, you've got different private communities up there like Oak Crest and Eagle Crest and gated communities up there that are just going to be that level up in size and cost so just another point about Suncrest yeah 
that area. Okay, let's talk about Chandler. Chandler Point specifically, that's right on bench side of South Mountain. So to give you kind of a reference point, that is halfway up the mountain, looking over the Salt Lake Valley. It's not all the way up like Suncrest is, and they're generally not gonna be as expensive. They're gonna be comparable normally with um, that South Mountain range. It's really similar, basically just a street Traverse Mountain Road basically splits those two areas in half. Um, Chandler Point is where if you go far enough up it, that's where you'll hit Steep Mountain Park. You'll also hit um, the park where they do a lot of the, uh, the paragliding and all of that. It's up that way. Very, very popular. People go there all the time and most of the year to do it. You get these incredible thermal pockets there and so they do a lot of that paragliding basically off that mountainside. So that's something to think about when you're looking at the different areas in Draper, Chandler Point, and the other neighborhoods and subdivisions in that area will kind of have that same similar feel to it. There are a bunch of gated communities all throughout all of these. So to give you an idea, I mean, frankly, we could go on forever on all these different communities. So if you have specific ones in mind, you know, definitely reach out to me. We can talk more about it. Let's talk about Steeplechase. I haven't seen steeplechase talked about before, so it definitely needs to be talked about. Steeplechase is, it's kind of in its own little pocket. It's kind of contained within itself, but steeplechase is where you'll find a lot of these bigger homes. Basically, it takes you all the way up towards the, uh, the Draper Temple for the LDS Church. That will be steeplechase. I mean, if you think about it, the steeples, you're looking at it, so you're chasing the steeple. Makes sense but Steeplechase has a lot of bigger homes. It has a really nice feel to it where these the main streets have a walking path, dedicated walking path in between you know, each lane, each driving lane. So it separates that off nicely. It had a really cool feel to Steeplechase. And as you get further up, you get into a separate section of Steeplechase where the homes just blow up in size. They get infinitely bigger. This is where you're gonna find multi-million dollar homes. One area in Draper where you'll find these multi-million dollar homes, and I'm talking eight, nine, 10, 12,000 square foot homes or bigger. And a lot of these homes, I looked at one earlier today that was 9,500 square feet. It was only six bedrooms. So they're massive bedrooms, lots of hanging out places, family rooms, theater rooms in these homes, gyms, that's what you can kind of expect on this hot top end of steeplechase and even a little bit further into it, the bottom end. But for the most part, that's gonna be one of those zones where if you want that more mansion-like feel, steeplechase and especially that top portion of it, which I can't, I can't recall. I, I can't recall what it's called, but I will show you those clips and that's gonna be an area where you will find a good fit for that niche. just all big homes. There are some places here where you can get a lot bigger lots. It's not uncommon to find lots that are half acre or bigger or bigger. Uh, it really just depends on what you're looking at. But the use of that lot is something that I harp on all the time that you're gonna have to measure out. I mean, if you're a 12,000 square foot house, a half acre lot is not that big. So you're gonna have to kind of think about that one. But as in regards to Draper's not just cookie cutter big homes, expensive homes, right? If you go down to areas like uh, the Whedon area, oh, what's it specifically called? Whedon Preserve, Whedon Farms, you know, down there in that Whedon zone. It used to be an old farm, like a lot of Draper was, and it's very much lots of townhomes and single family homes that are very close together. This is where you'll find things under $700,000, $600,000, you know, underneath there, Four to seven is probably a good estimate for that area. Townhomes are gonna to be cheaper, probably in the threes, 
but that's going to be an area where if you want more of that like urban feel but you want to be a little bit away that's going to be a good area for you the weeding farms weeding preserve whatever they're calling it these days okay so that weeding farms has a nice park there to it very historic a nice little monument to there and lots of hiking paths and biking trails which you see all over draper you see it all up and down throughout the city and especially as you get further up into that traverse mountain ridge area south mountain traverse suncrest lots of hiking and biking paths gorgeous views so that's another point to bring up if you want more of a mountain view you're gonna need to go further up it makes sense or up towards a uh, hidden valley where i'm at now or any of these numbers of areas is where you're going to want to be for more of that mountain view that a lot of people come here for it's going to be in those areas if you're like the Whedon area that's just basically just urban suburban city like your views are going to be i-15 and the salt lake valley so weigh that out whichever one is best for you this is meant to kind of give you just an overview of what these are like kind of cost of homes feel of the area all of that if this has helped you in any way again and you're looking to move out here reach out to me my number's down here i am the one that answers the phone i am the one that answers the emails i am the one you'll talk to if you book a zoom call so all of those things i am the one you'd be talking to and i love answering these phone calls until next time guys catch you later